When did someone prove everyone wrong? The day my little sister Maya walked into her first day of high school, everyone said she'd never make it in regular classes because she has Down syndrome. The guidance counselor wanted to put her in all special education courses, saying, let's be realistic about her capability. My parents fought for months to get her into mainstream classes with support. Teachers rolled their eyes during meetings, saying things like, this isn't fair to the other students, and she'll just hold everyone back. Maya heard every word. She'd come home from those meetings and practice reading out loud in her room for hours. I'd find her at at the kitchen table at midnight, copying math problems over and over until her handwriting was perfect. The first semester was brutal. Kids stared, some laughed when she needed extra time to answer questions. Her biology teacher, Mr. Peterson, was the worst. He'd sigh dramatically whenever Maya raised her hand and speak to her like she was five years old. I watched my sister's confidence crumble those first few weeks. She'd come home asking why she was different and if maybe everyone was right about her not belonging. It broke my heart seeing her doubt herself because of other people's ignorance, but Maya never gave up. She joined the school's peer tutoring program and started helping younger kids with reading. Turns out, she had this incredible patience that made her amazing at explaining things simply. By October, something shifted. Maya's study group started meeting at our house because everyone said she made the hardest concepts easy to understand. Kids who used to ignore her were asking for her help with homework. The real moment came during the spring science fair. Maya had been working on a project about how music affects plant growth for months. She'd set up speakers in our garage, playing different genres to identical plants and measuring their growth daily. Daily. Mr. Peterson barely glanced at it during the setup, mumbling something about participation trophy. When judging started, Maya presented her project with such passion and clarity that a crowd gathered. She explained her methodology, showed her data charts, and answered every question the judges threw at her. One judge asked about her control variables, and Maya launched into this detailed explanation about soil pH, light exposure, and water consistency that left everyone impressed. Another judge questioned her statistical analysis, and Maya pulled out graphs she'd created showing correlation coefficient. The room went completely silent when they announced the winner. Third place went to the robotics project everyone expected to win. Second place went to the chemistry experiment that took month to complete. First place goes to Maya Chen for her outstanding research on botanical acoustics. Mr. Peterson's jaw literally dropped. The same man who questioned whether Maya belonged in his classroom was watching her accept the top prize at the district science fair. But the best part wasn't the trophy. It was watching Maya's study group cheer louder than anyone else, rushing the stage to hug her. These kids who barely knew her in September were now her biggest supporters. At the awards ceremony, Maya got to the microphone and said, thank you for believing I could do this, even when some people thought I couldn't. She looked right at Mr. Peterson when she said it. He was crying. Later, he pulled our family aside and said, Maya taught me more about teaching than 20 years of experience ever did. Now Maya's a senior, taking AP classes and planning for college. That guidance counselor who wanted to limit her, she retired early. Sometimes the people everyone underestimates end up being the ones who change everything.